All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over the journal entries when it comes to the equity method of accounting. Um, this will help you in this week's lesson when it comes to booking journal entries. So um, you're gonna encounter a question when it comes to booking entries, and if you pay attention, I pretty much give you the answer. So let's start with the acquisition when we acquire an investment. So for instance, again, going back to the example that we've been using for a couple of times here, I'm, com I'm the corporation, I decide to invest in company A. When I decide to invest in company A, I'm gonna have to give up cash. In order to give up cash, I'm gonna have to do a journal entry for that giving up of cash. And so we're gonna debit an account called investment in company A for let's just say $100,000 and we would credit cash for $100,000. So I'm deciding to invest in company A, let's say 25% of their company for $100,000. So I'm gonna have to give them $100,000, which means my cash decreases. Uh, cash is like an asset, decreases in assets are credits. So credit cash for $100,000 and debit this new account called investment in company A. So we go down the road. At the end of the year, we're gonna have two things happen. One thing is we're gonna have to book a net income and then another thing that we're gonna have to book is the dividend if we receive a dividend. Let's start with the net income. When we book the net income, Typically, we have to book our proportional share of the investee's income to our books. So if we own, again, 25% of investment A, or uh, sorry, investment in company A, so 25% of company A that we own, company A does $100,000 of net income, then we would book a $25,000, and the way we would get $25,000 is we would take $100,000 of its net income multiplied by our ownership of 25 dollars percent um, and we would get $25,000. So we would book an increase in our investment in company A by $25,000. So investment in company A increases, it increases because we had net income proportional to our ownership of company A. Uh, we would debit that for $25,000 and we would credit an account called equity in investee income for $25,000. That's the new account uh, for us here in the equity method of accounting. Uh, this account really just keeps charge of the income that's attributed to our ownership in the investee um, based on our equity of that investee. So credit equity and investment income for $25,000. All right, next, uh, before we go on to dividends received, if it was a loss, we would just switch those and then you would have debit equity investment, investee income credit investment in company A. All right, dividends is a clear. Now, one thing when we talk about dividends is dividends happen, two things happen in these dividends. One, the board of directors will first declare the dividends, and then secondly, the dividends will be paid. Now, it makes sense from an administrative standpoint. When the board of directors declares it today, checks can't be cut today. And so what happens is there's some lead time in which uh, the accounting departments or whomever needs to figure out how much dividends they're actually gonna pay, who's gonna be, who has the right to this dividends, and then the payments made. So uh, under the equity method of accounting, we have two entries that we're gonna to need to make. One entry is for the actual dec declaration of the dividend of the investee, and then the second one is when we receive the cash from the investee as the dividend payment. So when the dividend's declared, we're gonna debit dividends receivable for whatever amount, and then we're gonna credit the investment in company A. Remember, under the equity, of me equity method of accounting, when we receive a dividend, it's like kind of a reduction in our investment of it because we're not receiving the cash. Another way to think about it, don't think too hard about it, but another way to think about it is if we're investing or we're lending $100 to them and they give us $15 back, they only owe us $85, not necessarily $100. So we're kind of looking at this from a liability standpoint. Um, if that helps you. So that's kind of what we're doing here is we're reducing the investment in company A because we no longer have that investment there because they've given it to us in cash. We can take that cash and do something else with it. All right, and then standard financial accounting journal entry cash received when the cash is received. We reduce our dividends receivable down to zero hopefully. So that's why there's a credit for dividends receivable. In return, we receive cash, okay? Now, inventory, um, let's go over the journal entries and then we'll talk a little bit about inventory very quickly, but from the inventory, there is a, if there is a situation in which 
uh, company, my corporation sells to company A, we're going to have to defer the profits, defer the income until a point in which that company A then sells it to their third party or uses it all. So the way that we would defer, now this is defer, is we would debit equity and investees income for X amount of dollars and we would credit investment in company A. Why are we doing that? We are deferring that profit, so we're going to reduce that profit as if uh, we had a loss. Remember, we said if this was a loss, we would switch it. Well, if we are going to defer the profits, we would also switch this because it would be a loss. Um, and instead of, um, well, exactly like that. So we would book it like a loss, okay? Now, what are we saying here? Well, think about it this way. Um, let's say I own a vehicle and I decide to sell my vehicle to a family friend, okay? I might give them preferential treatment, giving them a lower price than someone else who I don't even know, a third party. And so what happens here is, let's say a company, a corporation like mine, decides to invest in company A because I like some of the things that they're doing. In return, me or them will decide to uh, give a preferential treatment when it comes to inventory. And so instead of maybe selling it them to uh, selling an equipment to them for a dollar a piece, I'm selling it to them 85 cents a piece. And so what the equity method of accounting says is we need to defer the profits until the actual uh, goods when they buy it or when we buy it are to a third party's hand. So we've sold it to a third party or we've completely used it. And so in this case, um, simple example, there's a, there's a, the example goes fully in the book, but um, let's say I sell um, company a $100,000 worth of inventory that they sell to someone else. So because I did that, I usually get a 30% profit. So $100,000 to them um, and of that $100,000 of inventory to them, which means it cost me $70,000, so I make a $30,000 profit. Well, because they haven't, sold, they haven't sold all of it to a third party, I can't recognize a $30,000 profit or all of the $30,000 profit. Now, $100,000, let's say at the end of the year, they've sold $990,000, which means they have $10,000 left. And so $10,000 left, if my gross profit margin on it was 30%, then um, I would have booked a $33,000 net profit okay, from it. What we do is we take our $3,000 net profit, we multiply our ownership of, in this case, let's say 40%, and so I'm gonna defer net income of $1,200 until after that is now out of their hands or they've used it all, okay? Um, small thing, not really a huge thing, um, but if you come up to a question when it comes, talks about inventory, if it hasn't all been sold, we need to make an adjustment for the inventory that is still in their possession or in our possession, either way, upstream or downstream, uh, for the deferral of that gain until after it's been sold to a third party or after it's been used. So uh, when it comes to that inventory, we would uh, debit that equity and investing income, credit investment in company A. In this case, we're deferring $1,200, so we would put $1,200 and $1,200 there. Okay, so those are the journal entries when it comes to the equity method of accounting and when it comes to our investment into an investee, and in our case, we've been using company A.